object is a hanging model. Oh, okay. So we hang fabric to find the form of a structure and then we harden it and then flip it so it will be a complete compression. When you think of a shell structure, maybe you can think of an egg. An egg is a structure that has to span a certain distance and it uses very little material. The first shells really came about in Germany in the 1920s. This was a studio course, so that means that the, the students were posed an open-ended question, for example, how to make these models, and they had to come up themselves with innovative construction techniques and materials to make the models. An integral part of the course is going on a field trip and this year we took our students to Germany to go and look at very prominent shell structures. In engineering, students usually don't go on field trips, but in other disciplines like art and architecture, students are encouraged to go and see the works of Monet or uh, Le Corbusier. Like, so going to Germany, we're able to go to the museum and see it in real life, which is pretty sweet. I remember when I was a student of civil engineering uh, back in Belgrade, uh, until I visited the first structure in my life, everything was very much abstract. So the idea of this class was really to expose them to all these real life settings. In the beginning of the course, our students organized themselves in teams and they chose a structure that they wanted to work on. And then we went to visit the structures and very often we also discussed with the engineer and the architect that had worked on these structures. We were very lucky. Uh, some of these engineers invited us to their offices. So actually going to an office and seeing what engineers do in a day was, I think, very revealing for our students. This is our exhibit, and here we can see two models of my favorite structure, which is Mannheim Multihall. The shape was made using hanging chain model. First, the structure was built in a plane, and then it was lifted from the inside in order to get its final shape. In this exhibition, we see different types of shells that kind of illustrate that evolution of shell form and shell construction. For me, a very interesting moment was when we went to visit the Eilek in Stuttgart. They had a very large plywood shell there that could move depending on the environmental conditions. So this shell could become larger or taller in function of the weather conditions. That's an aha moment for me because usually all these structures that you see here uh, in the exhibition, they don't move, they stay where they are. But I think now we are maybe also moving more in an era of smart structures where they adapt to external conditions. And this was for me very interesting. Mm -hmm.